What is subject to? If you're new to real estate or new to creative financing, you've probably heard this term thrown out a whole bunch of times, subject to, subject to, or sub to for short. There are probably a million questions you have about sub to or subject to, like what is it? How does it work? Why would anybody sell their house that way? Where do you find people that are willing to sell their house that way? How do you convince somebody? How do you talk to a seller or a real estate agent about subject to? Is this even legal? You probably have a million questions about subject to if you're just getting into creative financing in real estate. Well, those are will all be addressed in, in future videos. I'm actually creating a playlist all about subject two right here on this channel. But this video specifically, all we're going to do is just unpack what it actually is. What is subject two? And we're gonna do it in three simple steps. By the end of this video, you are gonna be 100% confident that you know exactly what subject two is, exactly how it works, and you are actually gonna be able to turn around and explain it to the next person, maybe a seller or a real estate agent. We're gonna accomplish that in three Three simple steps. If you hang it, hang with me. I know it's confusing, but you're gonna get it. So, without further ado, let's get started. Step number one, key number one, and this is what I had to ha to wrap my head around before I could get subject to uh, the concept of how it works, is that number one, you have to know that there is a difference between the deed to a property and the debt on a property. These are two completely different things that are mutually exclusive from one another. They are different. The deed to a property is who owns it, and the debt to the property is who owns the debt or who has a mortgage on it or who owns the note. These are two different things, and this is step one in understanding sub two. If you, if you don't get this, you won't understand subject two. The deed and the debt are different. So, for instance, when you go to buy a house, you buy a house and you, the deed transfers into your name. That means you own it. You are the owner of the house. You own the deed. But if you borrowed money from a bank or a federal credit union, something like that, in order to buy the house, they own what is called the debt. They can have many different names. It's a deed of trust. That's why, why it gets kind of confusing. A deed of trust is actually talking about it secures the debt, but it has the word deed in it, so it gets confusing. But it's a mortgage, it's a, a promissory note, right? The, the, let's just, for, for the conversation, call it debt. That there's debt on the property that's owed, like a mortgage, and there's a deed to the property, that's who owns the property. So you buy a house, the deed transfers into your name, but the debt is owned by the credit union, let's say that you borrowed the money from. So the credit union doesn't own the house. You own the house, right? You're the homeowner. You own the house. The deed is in your name, but they have debt on the house. They own debt on the house, a lien, sometimes called a lien mortgage. They, they own debt on the house. Now, what you have to understand in order to step into the whole idea of buying property subject to is that these are two completely different things, and that's going to show up to be very important in just a minute. The deed and the debt to the property are two different things, okay? So that's step number one. Step number two to understanding subject two or sub two is first understanding how a normal traditional transaction works in real estate. So let's just throw out some numbers. Let's say a seller is selling their house for $200,000. They still owe $100,000 of debt on that property. Now they're selling for 200 grand. So typically most buyers in the market don't actually have $200,000 sitting in a bank account, right? They have to go borrow the money from someone else. So let's say they go to a bank, they borrow the money, they borrow $200,000 and they pay off the seller $200,000 for their house. Well, when that original seller collects the $200,000, 100,000 of it immediately goes to pay off the mortgage, the, the debt that's still on the house, right? And then they pay commissions and closing costs and all these things, and whatever's left over is their net proceeds that they get to walk away with at the closing table. And upon doing so, when all this happens, the deed to the property transfers into your name, and you now owe $200,000 to the bank you borrowed the money from, right? That's a traditional real estate uh, transaction. This is like 90 something percent of the market, right? So you go borrow new money, you pay off the seller's old money, and they can walk away with any net proceeds. And you now own the house, but the bank that you borrowed the money from, they own the debt on the house because deed and debt are two different things, right? You're tracking with me so far. So that's a traditional 
transaction. So that's step number two. You're almost there. Step number three. Ready? Now we're step number three. We're going to break down a subject to uh, transaction, subject to the existing debt. It's it's sub two is a, is a really short form way of saying subject to the existing debt. So now here we go. Step three. So how do you buy a property subject to? Same example. Somebody selling their house for two hundred thousand dollars, but they still owe one hundred thousand dollars to the bank. So when you're in a subject to transaction, you are still going to buy the house for $200,000. But instead of like a traditional transaction where you're going to go borrow money from a bank and pay off their old mortgage, in this instance, you are not going to do that. Instead, what you are going to do is simply take over the monthly payments for their existing debt. Meaning, let's say they, they borrowed money from Wells Fargo. They still owe $100,000 to Wells Fargo for the house. The, the Wells Fargo still has $100,000 of debt that they own on the house. So what you're going to do is the deed, this is why it's important, the deed is going to transfer to you, so you are now the homeowner, but the debt, that $100,000 that's owed to Wells Fargo, is going to stay in their name. That's key. Stay in their name. Even though the deed transfers to you, the debt stays in their name. So the deed comes to your name, but the debt stays in their name because the deed and the debt are two separate things, remember? And you are going to take over their payments. I'm getting confused which hand is which. <laughs> You're going to take over their payments. So let's say their mor monthly mortgage payment is $1,000. You are going to start making payments on their mortgage that they own owe to Wells Fargo in this scenario, and you are not going to go borrow new money from a bank. And keep in mind, one little caveat here is you are also not assuming the mortgage. That's a very specific term that means you're basically like your name is going to be put on the debt, on the mortgage. That's not what you're doing. You're not assuming it. You are simply taking it over or now making payments for their existing debt. And that is a subject to transaction. The deed transfers over to you, so you are now the homeowner, but the debt that is owed on the property stays in their name. And you start making payments, their mortgage payments for them, instead of them doing it. You are not going to borrow new money. You are going to keep the debt existing on the property, and you are going to make payments for them. So I'm sure this is bringing up a million questions for you like, why in the world would anybody do that? Why would anybody keep the debt in their name but let the deed or the ownership transfer over to you? I'm sure you're wondering how you even have that conversation. How do you pitch it? How do you talk to agents? Is this even legal? Well, again, this video is a part of a series, part of a playlist, unpacking all this to get you caught up to speed. So to answer the question, why in the world would anybody sell their house to you subject to, watch this video here. And to answer the question, is this even legal? Is this even allowed? And how do you even explain this to a real estate agent or seller as far as is this illegal? Uh, click this video here and watch that video here. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.